In this video, we will discuss how to put quadratic equations in vertex form by cleverly completing the square. Quadratic equations may be given or put in different forms. One particularly convenient form is what is sometimes called vertex form. The graph of the equation y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k will be a parabola with axis of symmetry x equal h and vertex point h comma k. The illustration shows an upward parabola and a downward parabola. When a is positive, the parabola opens upwards. When a is negative, the parabola opens downward. Each parabola has an axis of symmetry at x equals h and a vertex with coordinates h, k. Briefly, we will consider graphing a quadratic equation that's given in vertex form. In particular, let's graph y equal negative 2 times the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 3. Since a equal negative 2, the parabola opens downward. We can read the vertex hk right off the formula. The vertex is minus 1, comma 3. Thus, we can make a rough sketch of this graph. We need coordinate axes to include x values roughly symmetric about x equal negative 1 and y values covering the vertex and going down a bit because we have a down parabola. I've used the interval from negative 3 to 2 on the x-axis and the interval from minus 5 to 5 on the y-axis. We'll plot the y-intercept, plot the vertex, and dot in the axis of symmetry, and then sketch the parabola symmetric about the line y equal, uh, x equal negative 1. If we wanted a more accurate sketch, we can include our x-intercepts. How do we put the equation y equal ax squared plus bx plus c in vertex form? We will use two key ideas. We will complete the square carefully by adding a clever zero on one side of the equation. Let's consider an example before formally presenting a process. We want to write y equal x squared minus 8x plus 6 in vertex form. We start with our given equation. We add a clever zero on one side of the equation. This keeps the right-hand side equal to y. Using the associative law of addition, let's regroup. Notice the perfect square trinomial in parentheses. We have y equal the quantity x minus 4 squared minus 10 in vertex form. Looking back, we see that to complete the square on x squared minus 8x, we needed to add 16. But we added and subtracted 16 to maintain equality equal to y. Let's formalize our process. Start with the expression x squared plus bx. Add and subtract b over 2 quantity squared to the previous expression. Note that we have added exactly what was needed to make a perfect square trinomial. Regroup and combine terms as needed to produce vertex form. Let's consider four more examples, each with its own little twist. First, put y equal x squared plus 4x minus 7 in vertex form. We start with the given equation. We have a leading coefficient of 1 and an even coefficient on the x term. This is the ideal case for completing the square. We want to add and subtract 2 squared on the right-hand side. If we regroup, 
we notice that x squared plus 4x plus 4 is a perfect square trinomial. Thus, y equals x plus 2 quantity squared minus 11 in vertex form. Now let's consider an example where the coefficient of the x term is not even. We want to put y equal x squared plus 3x minus 8 in vertex form. We start with the given equation. This time we add and subtract 3 halves squared on the right hand side of the equation. When we regroup, we have a perfect square trinomial. We also note that common denominators are needed to add the remaining terms. So we change minus 8 into minus 32 fourths. Thus we get x equals 3 halves quantity squared minus 41 fourths in vertex form. For our last two examples, we consider problems in which a is not 1. In these cases, we have to do a little bit of factoring before completing the square. Now we want to put y equal negative x squared plus 6x minus 15 in vertex form. We start with the given equation, but to complete the square, the leading coefficient must be 1. So we factor negative 1 out of the first two terms, and now we will complete the square inside the parentheses. We add and subtract 9, which is 3 squared, inside the parentheses. When we regroup, we notice that we have minus a negative 9, which is a plus 9, to combine with the negative 15. Inside the parentheses, we're left with a perfect square trinomial. So our vertex form is y equals negative x minus 3 squared minus 6. The algebra in this example is a bit subtle. You may want to expand this vertex form to confirm that y equals minus x squared plus 6x minus 15 that we started with. Let's consider a final example where the leading coefficient a is not plus or minus 1. Let's put y equal 2x squared minus 8x plus 7 in vertex form. We start with the given equation, but to complete the square, the leading coefficient must be 1. So we factor 2 out of the first two terms and complete the square inside the parentheses. We add and subtract 4, which is a negative 2 squared, inside the parentheses. When regrouping, we notice that we have 2 times negative 4 to combine with the plus 7. Inside the parentheses, we have a perfect square trinomial, and therefore our vertex form is y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 2 squared minus 1. The algebra in this example is also a little bit subtle, so you might want to expand the vertex form to confirm that y equals the quadratic that we started with. Once you have the equation in quadratic form, or once you have the quadratic equation, excuse me, in vertex form, finding the vertex is easy. However, having the equation in standard form, y equal ax squared plus bx plus c, is advantageous for finding the intercepts. Therefore, we often use whichever form of the equation is most appropriate for the task at hand.